So some people have been talking about post-SSRI syndrome, which is essentially defined as someone who has taken an SSRI, which is usually for depression or an anxiety disorder, and they experience sexual dysfunction, and they stop the medication, and they feel it persists. Post-SSRI syndrome is, not, is a syndrome, but actually we call it post-SSRI sexual dysfunction. And it's defined as a situation that published in 2021 with diagnostic criteria. It means that someone suffering from side effects of the SSRI that continue at least three months after discontinuation of the medication. This sexual, uh, these sexual symptoms are mainly uh, have the features of less pleasure, pleasurable sexuality. One of the most important complaints is loss of sensitivity in the genita genitals, uh, loss of sensitivity in the nipples and unpleasurable orgasm. And there are a series of other sexual uh, side effects like loss of libido, erectile dysfunction. These are the futures of, of PSSD. One of the problems with that is that it's a very small number of people who have had this complaint among the billions of people and billions of prescriptions of serotonin reuptake inhibitors that have been prescribed and taken over the years. So it would be very hard to prove prospectively that this condition exists, that you look at people before they start on an SSRI, you treat them with an SSRI, you stop the SSRI when it's appropriate, and they have sexual dysfunction. Because some people do have sexual dysfunction while they're taking it. It's a known side effect. My biggest problem with this is also that people who complain about this, some of them have only taken the drug for one or two days. It is physiologically not possible for this to happen in that time frame. So I think what we might need to do is more fully evaluate what's going on. The treatment of post-SSRI is difficult because we don't understand really the mechanism. We have theories about how it exists, and based on the theories, we try to find a solution for the patients. But because we know, don't know exactly the cause, we need to guess and to see how to deal with it. And the treatment is always, in my opinion, biopsychosocial. It means that biologically, we look on lifestyle and give an advice on it. We look on medication that can support the patient. The patients have it because of use of SSRIs, so we don't use SSRI, but we look on opportunity according to the theories that, that we have, dopamine agonist, uh, uh, an anxiety reduction medication, those combination, supplements of vitamins that we know. We support the sexual uh, function with antidote or, for example, PD-5 inhibitors to support erectile dysfunction. And the same goes to deal with um, the complaints and how to incorporate it in daily life that people can be function as good as possible. The most likely cause of sexual dysfunction is depression or anxiety disorders. And if those are remaining untreated because the person discontinued the medication, then in fact, uh, it's probably due to persistent depression and we need to treat it. And I have seen one case in which they reported uh, t uh, changing the person from being on an SSRI to being on vortioxetine, one of the uh, antidepressants that doesn't cause sexual dysfunction. and they improved uh, their sexual function returned to normal and i expect that their mood also returned to normal the key point is we don't know how it's happened and we don't understand it so we don't have a cure the po it's important to realize these things but it doesn't say that it will stay for all life expect gradual improvement with all the measurements that are available but realize also that you have some of that in your hand. It's understandable that it's very difficult to gain in all activities when you have problems, but you can take the positive aspects, the good enough sex and a good enough life.